just wanted to say hello first of all and welcome to this evening's webinar. Uh, my name is Jasmine McGonagall and I'm on the admissions team here at Escape Studios. Uh, so tonight we welcome you to Nuke in Production with Gareth Parry. Um, he'll be sharing some tales from the front line of a busy post production facility in Moulinet. Gareth is the senior DI editor at Moulinet and on occasion it's his job to jump into Nuke to fi fix a variety of creative and technical problems for production. Uh, so he'll be using examples from recent projects and Gareth will show you how valuable a tool like Nuke really is for him and his team. Um, so we'll be taking questions at the end also, so please feel free to submit any questions that you might have in the chat box. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll hand straight over to Gareth now, but I'll be back at the end to tell you just a bit more about what's happening here at Escape and the training we provide. So over to you Gareth, thank you very much. Hi there, thank you. Um, I am just trying to get my webcam up as well, but I think I'll stick with um, audio only for now. Um, so, as Jasmine was saying, I'm a, a DI editor and a compositor, and so I wanted to talk to you about some of the uh, interesting things that we're doing with Nuke um, that you may not have come across um, in the sort of run-of-the-mill um, visual effects um, way of working. Um, uh, just to give you a sort of an idea of some of the stuff we've been doing recently, um, we've done a digital restoration job um, on an entire feature film um, to get rid of dead pixels. Um, we have um, used Nuke to stabilize, to track, um, to reduce noise um, in DI plates, um, as well as um, uh, compositing, so fixes, um, rod removals, tracking and marker removals, and then moving into more uh, creative tasks, um, yeah, compositing and also uh, motion graphics sort of stylistic creation um, of effects. Um, so maybe I can start with something um, that might be a little bit more um, familiar um, to you guys, which is, you know, uh, comping in some new elements to shot footage. Um, this is a work in progress um, shot. You'll have to excuse me if I keep pressing the wrong shortcuts, but I'm stuck between Linux and Windows and Mac all at the same time. Um, okay, so um, here's the plate um, shots on red at 4K. Um, we are, right now we're looking um, at the um, at the original image of that. In fact, um, if I just quickly do a bit of Control V, we should be able to view the proxy as well. Um, get a bit better playback. Okay, so this is shot in London. Um, you can see it's a log image, and uh, this guy is walking through the park. Um, but it's supposed to be Argentina, and so the director was looking for some extra recognizable elements to mark it out um, as Argentina um, and also to try to look at um, fixing this large muddy grass area in the foreground. Okay, so um, a word about elements. I'm not sure if I'm going to get into trouble here, um, but the internet is where I go um, to get elements. Um, I've never ever had a problem in over a decade um, of doing this stuff. Um, and I would suggest that you probably wouldn't either. Um, and so quick tip from me is set your Google image search to large images only, um, and you will hopefully find what you want. So this is a jacaranda tree native to Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, this is a great kiskadee, um, uh, which all Argentinians will immediately recognize as, as a native of their country. And so these are the two elements that I'm looking to pop into this shot. Um, so the first job um, is to prep up uh, the tree. Um, so I uh, stuck it through key light quickly just to take the blue out. As you can see, that's nowhere near what you would call a perfect key. Um, but with um, the help of a little bit of roto and color correction. Um, it is a good enough key. Um, maybe a quick diversion about color corrections. Um, I often see 
Uh, some funny ways of doing color corrections, something to do with looking at all three channels separately and making sure they look good. I think um, my point of view, color correction, it's best to do it by eye, um, but there are some very helpful um, ways that Newt can help get you in the right ballpark. Um, so let's just look quickly at the tree natively and then back at our place. Okay. Um, so one thing that can be very good is to use the curve tool um, and the curve tool will analyze your image and tell you um, where the brightest and the darkest um, pixels in the image are. So if I go max luma pixel, hit go, let's just do one frame. So I'm getting a little flag for my min and max luma pixels, that, to be honest. That doesn't look quite right to me. <laughs> uh, doesn't look right at all. I can't be the brightest things in that image. Um, but even if you don't want to use that, you can use your color correction, color corrector direct, and use the picker tools to help get you there. So let's say that his glasses are roughly the darkest thing. They're probably not somewhere down here, maybe in the ground. Okay, so let's pick that as our offset. Control Alt like that, and then find our brightest image, part of the image. Nice highlight somewhere. There we go. Okay, so that will not equal um, the right color correction by any means, um, but what it does. Um, is it's extremely successful in setting the correct tonal balance for that image. Um, you can see the difference I'm making. Obviously, it's sitting up now to match into the plate, but also um, that red hue um, is coming across from the plate into the still. And then you can just tweak the values overall um, to get um, what you're looking for on the right, the right camera and the right brightness. So that's. Um, a little thing that I find handy to do with color correctors. Okay, um, so basically we're we're prepping that plate up, and then um, we want to put it into the shot. And so obviously the key uh, the key to that is to do a camera track, um, and the key to doing a good camera track is to quickly exclude any elements that move in the shots um, separate to the camera. So we've got a very rough roto there. And then I did my camera track. Um, and that gives me my moving camera um, in the 3D scene. OK, so um, obviously I could then go through and place my cards for where I want the tree. Use the point cloud as your rough guide um, to um, what depth you should be placing these elements in. Now, I, I must say that um, as, a, as an editor and maybe um, not a uh, full-blown compositor, I don't tend to worry too much about whether they are in exactly the right depth. Um, but one very good way of working out is if you're in the rough ballpark and it also chimes in with a very helpful roto method um, is to do this. Okay, um, so I put my tree, and obviously that goes behind certain elements in my 3D scene. And so I want those elements to be put back on top. And given that I know how, in theory, every single element in depth in that comp moves, I should not have to worry about tracking that again. And so the trick is, if you project your scene back onto another card at the correct depth, and then um, pipe the output of that card back out into a scanline render, and you want to select UV as your projection mode. So effectively, what we're seeing here is a texture, the texture that is being applied to that card in 3D space. And if you, if we play through this quickly, um, it probably won't play through particularly quickly. But the trick is, if your texture is static relative to your card, then you are at the correct depth. Um, 
So we can see here um, these trees in the background are the part I'm worried about, and as we scan through, they stay exactly still. 